Welcome aboard. Welcome to today's tour. Today we are in London. We are at the London Heathrow Airport, airport code EGLL. Short flight today, direct route right over to London City Airport, airport code LCY. But that direct route will take us right to the site of today's tour. We are going to fly over Buckingham Palace. I will get the plane started, set up the cockpit. We will take a quick look at the flight plan, which is pretty simple today, and we will get this plane in the air. Let's fly. The Heathrow Airport was originally known as the London Airport until 1966, but now it's known as London Heathrow, and it's the major international airport here in London. The airport is about 14 miles or 23 kilometers west of central London, and it has two parallel east-west runways. A quick taxi here today and we will be on our way if this is your first time with us taking a tour welcome what I do is find interesting places to fly to and talk about and we visit them here in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 today we are back in the Cessna 172 Skyhawk find your seats buckle up we are at the hold short line Runway 27 right. We are ready to depart. Let's go tour London. Heathrow Tower Dude 005 ready to go runway 27 right IFR to London City. Dude 005 cleared for takeoff runway 27 right. Cleared for takeoff runway 27 right dude 005. Dude 005,
we are airborne as we climb here on our departure to the west we will get the plane turned around the track we're taking today is mostly to the east slightly northeast uh, to the london airport which will take us right over buckingham palace and the saint james park area a few things to see in that area of london but today we're mostly going to talk about the palace as we pass back over Heathrow Airport here, I believe the airport for international travel is the second busiest airport in the world. Buckingham Palace is the London home of uh, the British royal family. Uh, it's an enormous building, extensive gardens, and of course it's a very important site, not just for uh, ceremonial purposes, but political affairs of the United Kingdom, or the uh, United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. But for the monarchy that dates back almost a thousand years, Buckingham Palace is relatively a new home in the sense of being the home of the royal family. For more than 300 years, from about 1531 until 1837, the King of England's official residence in the capital city was St. James Palace. And that's about a quarter of a mile from Buckingham Palace. And St. James is still there, and it's the home of several members of the royal family. The site that the palace sits on is in the borough known as Westminster, and it's been in the hands of the British monarchy for more than 400 years. King James I originally found the site and acquired it to create a garden for the royals. It had a small four-acre grove of mulberry trees, which King James had hoped to use for silk production. Silkworms feed on the mulberry trees. There was a house on the property at the time, and that house passed through uh, multiple owners until 1698, when it was sold to a man named John Sheffield. Uh, John later became the Duke of Buckingham, and it is for him that the house on the property was ultimately named. Sheffield believed the house had become outdated, and he decided to build a new residence on the same property. He started construction in the early 1700s, and the new residence was designed and built by William Wind and John Fitch. The structure that he constructed became known as Buckingham House, and it was completed around 1705. In 1761, King George III purchased the house from Sir Charles Sheffield, and then began his own renovation. The king's plan was to use the home for his wife, Queen Charlotte, in their children. And after his family moved in, the building became known as the Queen's House. After King George III's death in 1820, his son George IV, who had ascended to the throne, began another renovation and expansion of the house. George IV, who had actually grown up in the house, favored it and wanted to make it the royal residence at some point. So he hired architect John Nash to expand and renovate the entire structure. Nash replaced the existing north and south wings with ones that were much grander in size and this enclosed the courtyard, which now had a marble archway as the entrance. Between ongoing construction and King George IV's health, he never did take up residence in the palace. After the death of King George IV in 1830, his brother William IV ascended to the throne, and William had no interest in relocating to the recently renovated palace, and he remained to stay at his current home, the Clarence Palace. 
Following the death of King William IV in 1837, his niece Victoria assumed the throne, and she would go on to become the first royal resident of Buckingham Palace. By 1847, the royal couple had found the palace too small for both their growing family and entertaining dignitaries. So a new wing was designed by Edward Bloor and built by Thomas Cubitt, and it enclosed the central quadrangle, or the courtyard. And this new large east front-facing wing, or mall, today is the public face of Buckingham Palace. And it contains the balcony from which the royal family acknowledges the crowds and can be seen on momentous occasions. Just ahead of us now is the palace. Uh, we'll first pass over Buckingham Palace Garden, then the palace itself, and then beyond that is the Victoria Memorial and St. James Park. Of course, at the end of St. James Park is 10 Downing Street, but we are gonna turn around and make a few more passes right over the palace. We'll get a close look at the palace itself. And as I mentioned, to the east side of it is the Victoria Memorial. Following the Queen being widowed in 1861, she withdrew from public life and for the most part left Buckingham Palace and was and spent most of her time at Windsor Castle or the Osborne House. So for many years after that, the palace was seldomly used and even neglected. In 1901, the new King, Edward VII, began redecorating the palace once again The ballroom, the grand entrance, the marble hall, and the grand staircase were all redecorated in a new cream and gold color scheme that they retain today. St. James Park, it's 57 acre park here in the city of Westminster and it's just beyond the Victoria Memorial. Now on this pass, right over the memorial and towards the east wing where the famous balcony is. And the monument here on the east side, the Victoria Memorial, it was designed in 1901. The original unveiling was in 1911, although the memorial wasn't completed totally until 1924. During World War II, the palace was bombed nine times. The most serious attack completely destroyed the palace chapel in 1940. Well, that was Buckingham Palace here in London. Now let's make our way to our final destination, which is London City Airport. Should be just to the east of us, airport code EGLC. And that's another international airport here in London. It's located by the Royal Docks in the London Borough of Newham. Well, that was today's tour, Buckingham Palace. There are a lot of sights to see here in London, so we will be back. But now it's time to get this plane on the ground, so buckle up, find your seats, buckle up. And again, if this is your first tour with us, welcome. Be sure to check out more tours below and be on the lookout for future tours. If you could do us a great favor, reach down and hit that subscribe button. It really helps the channel. Let's get this plane on the ground, London City Airport.
flock to Buckingham Palace for the changing of the guard, and occasionally to see the royals themselves. Inside, there's 830,000 square feet of ornate space. That's 775 rooms. This is the largest room in Buckingham Palace. This is where the Queen hosts all her fanciest dinner parties. And once the table's laid and everything's set, 170 guests can sit down all at once. But behind all the guilt and glory, all is not well. The old palace needs repairs. Of course, it's not the first time. During World War II, a German bomb demolished a whole wing, which had to be rebuilt. In 1950, the palace got a facelift. And since then, like any home, it's had constant minor touch-ups. But what's being proposed now is a major $250 million top-to-bottom renovation. Good for the building, not so good for its elderly occupants. Queen Elizabeth and Prince Philip will probably have to move out for a while. But fortunately, as a reigning monarch, the Queen's got another one. Windsor Castle, just 25 miles up the road. We are on the ground. Welcome to London City Airport. Let's get the plane to a parking spot, shut the plane down, take a look around the airport. Thanks for flying today with Dude Tours. As always, if you have any comments or corrections, what we talked about today is just my research that I've done reading. If you have an idea for another interesting place to fly to, by all means, please leave it in a comment below. 